Guys, while we are here, could you please write your names in the minutes? Hello, hi, Aditya. Uh, it is asking me that access is denied. No, uh, have you uh, filled in the newcomers form? Um, no, 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 not as of now. Okay, uh, cool, no problem. Yeah, I'll send you the link right now. Yeah, uh, you can fill it after the meeting. I'll I'll put down your name right now. Sure, sure. Thanks, thanks. Okay.
Okay, hey guys. Uh, so since we are two minutes over, uh, let's get started with the meeting. Uh, Lee will join us in a couple. So uh, Abhijay, I uh, like you said, yeah, you're new to the community. So we have a tradition here of introducing ourselves. So could you please go ahead and say a few lines about yourself? So hi everyone. My name is Abhijay Jain, and I am currently pursuing B.Tech in Computer Science. Uh, currently, I'm in third year of my college. And my tech stack includes React JS, Next JS, and I have a, a good knowledge of CSS frameworks and uh, uh, components uh, libraries as well, such as uh, Material UI, uh, Tailwind CSS, and uh, so on. So, and uh, I have contributed to some other orgs as well, as a, such as Foursquare, Maxly, Code for Cause, JBoss, and uh, currently I'm trying, uh, looking forward to contribute in Layer Five. Yeah, so that's all. Awesome. Sounds great. Uh, I know Nikhil Sharma is not new. Uh, he had been on a break for some time. Nikhil, so no one knows you on the meeting right now. Would you please introduce yourself to these people? Okay. I'm Nikhil. I'm currently a final year student at uh, Raven University. I mostly do front-end work with ReactJS and I have been contributing to Layer 5 already both on break and hope I can contribute more. That's awesome. It's great to have you back. So uh, let's get started with the meeting minutes. So Prakhar, you're up first. Uh, would you like to share your screen and discuss? Yeah, just a second, I'm opening it. Oh, okay. Uh, like it would take some time um, if someone could else take my place. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, we'll come back to you then. Uh, Shubham, would you like to talk about the customized video player then? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, initially, when we clicked on this button, see service mesh, mesh patterns in action. So the video was being downloaded in the user's uh, laptop. But uh, like, so the task was to have it in the model. So I did that. Uh, and then I tried to customize the video player a bit so that we could like, it, it looks up uh, uh, a bit better. So I did that. So this video player has some functionality, right? Like uh, we could uh, uh, decrease or increase the volume from this bar. Then we have this 10 seconds previous and 25 seconds afterwards, we could do that as well. And then this uh, uh, full screen and normal screen option. And then play and uh, stop button. And yeah, this uh, nice little hover, hover effect as well. Uh, so this is what I did. Uh, and this component, so we could use this uh, video player in other, like in other models as well, like in other places of layer five or machine as well. Yeah, so this is what I did. If any reviews or like someone feels that any suggestions uh, need here, please feel free to tell me. <laughs> um, this looks pretty cool. Uh, just a nitpick would be though, uh, like on, on the model right now, the video looks a little too big. If you if we could just uh, uh, okay. decrease the size, just maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything else looks fine to me. Uh, Others, if you guys have any comments about this. Yep, looks good to me too. Yeah. Uh, uh, one functionality is yet to be added, like when we click uh, on the outside, the model should close, right? Uh, so that's that that I will be adding like, uh, right, like right today. Other, mm -hmm. other functionalities are already added. That's 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 left right now. Awesome. Nice. This looks pretty good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shivam. Yeah, now finish. Prakar, are you ready to go? Yeah. 
ശരി മാസി so uh, my screen is visible yep okay uh so i were done all the things that were required in the review earlier so actually can we can see the preview here once again uh so we had to add uh, uh, the back to top button that would be visible uh, when we scroll up so now it is working fine so it's hiding and also it's visible after just a small scroll and uh, i think it's done uh, so prakar are we are we using an svg over there or is it some sort of no an uh, uh no just uh, plain css like we are using css property after oh awesome yeah sure. that that's exactly what we were looking for yeah so a uh, great this looks great uh, does anyone else uh, have any comments or views about this anyone not on board with this it looks great for me sorry did anyone say anything no i just said it looks great to me oh, awesome. okay uh, prakar uh, since you're already sharing there's another topic uh, for you on the minutes could yeah. let's yeah so it's this uh journey into the world of service meshes and meshery so this is the second pr uh so i have created this pr it's open uh so there was a uh, one comment by lee i was not sure what he was trying to say like uh, we have to make a generic devcon uh, event listing so what does this mean uh so he basically this means that uh, like this is a dev conference event right yeah so uh, if there's an event uh, like a base a uh, generic event for all dev conferences then we can add the other dev conf talks to them uh so what changes would I have to make there uh so basically i think it would just be the heading would just become like dev conference or something uh, let's uh, wait for lee so that we can discuss this i'm not really sure but that's what uh, he means over here is that we would have one event called maybe dev conferences or something and then we would list all these talks inside that event okay yeah so yeah so uh, he he'll be joining in sometime then we can talk about this again yeah sure so that's all from my end all right thank you brother uh so uh, uh we'll come back to my topic again later on cuz this is also going to need uh lee's intervention so abhijay would you like to talk about your yeah yeah uh, multi mesh okay let me share my screen yeah <coughs> yeah is it visible yeah 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 so in this pr uh, in this issue i need to add selenium logo with other uh, logos as well in multi mesh svg let me show you uh, one second Uh, my screen is not working um let me reshare it uh i'm not getting like how can i uh, this okay okay so uh is it visible this svg yep yep it's visible yeah so my task is to uh, add selenium logo with other uh, adapter like selenium adapter with other uh, svgs here so i 
made something like this. Let me show you. So on this mark, I will Lee commented that uh, it looks too stubby. So I just adjusted a bit and it is uh, now something like this. So uh, I want to ask, is this fine or do I need to change uh, its alignment and positioning? Uh, does anyone want to say anything? Anyone views about this? I registered this <laughs> SVJ as uh, we don't have anything uh, like uh, we we are following this approach that uh, we are uh, adjusting logos opposite of each other. So I adjusted this as of now. So in uh, mm -hmm. future, if we get uh, any another adopter, so we will adjust in opposite of this mm -hmm. SVG. Yep, yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks much better now. Uh, it's it looks nicely spaced out. Yeah. I think we can go ahead with this. Um, I think it would be easier if you could make a PR so that it uh, so we can watch it on the preview. Okay, okay. It'll be easier for us to review that way. Okay. And one another question is that uh I am also working on this PR. So in this PR, I need to uh, add workflows to the selenium machinery selenium adapter. Uh, repo. So, what I did, I just followed uh, Mishri. Kuma's workflow, as Lee mentioned, that uh, it just it just need to be copy pasted here. Here, <clears throat> so when we go to the workflows. There are some workflows related to E to E testing, which uh, I am not that uh, familiar. So I am not able to like uh, write E to E test. So uh, can you please guide me? How can I uh, write this uh, uh, so, test? For yeah. So uh, you would not actually have to copy these. Uh, so if you could go back to the dot GitHub file. Okay. Dot GitHub folder, not this here. Yeah. Uh, on Kuma itself. Yeah. Uh, one more. Yeah. So over here, there are uh, some which are very are generic to all the adapters. Uh, for example, uh, steel.yaml, uh, then the depender.yaml, config.yaml, uh, then there's the one with welcome and all. Even in workflows, there's a slack.yaml workflow. Uh, those are yeah. common for all adapters. Yeah. So you would just have to copy the ones which are common for all adapters. Uh, the E2E yeah. test would be handled. Those. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you want to just... do it a test later on, uh, then you could look into it. But right now we don't want that. Okay, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Since we are still in the alpha stage, we don't actually have support for the adapter yet. So there's no point writing E2E tests for them right now. Okay, okay. And one more, uh, like it, it is in suggestion uh, that. Uh, where is that doctor? Yeah. So my suggestion is uh, suggestion is to that uh, when whenever uh, a, a participant or a contributor raises a PR related to events and it gets add on uh, like uh, on layer uh, websites, uh, mm -hmm. then a automated tweet get generated uh, related to that event. So can we make a workflow uh, for that uh, to generate a automated uh, tweet? Related to that uh, workflow, that this event will happen on this this time, and uh, these are the uh, some speakers who will speak about it. Uh, so, I, what what would the workflow do exactly? So, whenever a contributor adds a new event in the layer uh, five website, then an automated uh, tweet gets generated on uh, layer five's Twitter handle. That this event will. Uh, uh, happened uh, at this time. So can we create a workflow for that? 
uh, I'm not sure if we'd be able to do that through a GitHub workflow. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but uh, but Abhijay, there's a problem. Like we we would not need to like uh, have this thing automated because we don't really have these many docs. Like they come in once in a while, so we could automatically like uh, write write our own tweets. So it won't be a problem. So making an automated uh, task would not like uh, serve a purpose, I guess. Yeah, no, it's we do have some events, but yeah, like you said, it's not like we are doing events every week, so there's no need for an automated event for it. Even if it was, it would be handled through Zapier or IFTTT. Uh, I don't think it would uh, happen through a GitHub workflow that we'd be able to send out a tweet. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's all. Okay, uh, thanks, Abhijay. Uh, Dipayan, would you like to uh, speak on your topic? Yeah, just uh, give me a minute. Okay. Uh, is my screen visible or something? Uh, yeah, it is visible, yeah. Cool. So the issue I was assigned was I have to improve this drop down. Uh, it should contain all the programs. Uh, don't pay attention to the styling as for now. I will change it later on. Uh, the thing is, uh, Lee said that uh, usually user has to go back every time they click on a program. Uh, like suppose you're on Google's season of docs. Now you want to go to Linux Foundation. Okay, you just have to go back and then again click on it. So it's a lot of work. <laughs> So what we asked me to do is like make a drop down that will contain every link so that we can just click on anything. This Linux foundation from here, we will go to that. Like we want to go to MLH fellowship, we can go there also. So yeah, and that's what I was assigned. I think it works pretty fine and I will change the styles later on. So yeah. So if you have any comments or any improvements I can make here. So yeah, go ahead. I think it is looking quite good as part like talking about the functionality thing. Functionality, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, remove the select program. Uh, we don't need it there. Like it's understandable that someone needs to select okay. a program from there. Okay, so and, yeah, remove it on the default name. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah, there's, there's no need for anything. Just the drop down over there would look perfect. And, uh, and let's have the drop down open below not on top yeah i know that that we can uh, uh set select program as in placeholder on drop down yeah that that can also be done if you uh, if you want to have a select program then we can put it in a placeholder in the drop down okay so yeah. that yeah. all in all this looks pretty pretty good to like yeah functionality wise also okay awesome uh, anyone else uh, do you guys have any thing uh, that you want to uh, anyone not on board with having a drop down over here okay i guess not uh, okay thanks uh, uh, the did you have anything else to discuss no. <laughs> oh, awesome. okay thank you the sure since I can see that Lee is here. Uh, Prakar, let's uh, talk about the event again so that we can, yes, yes. so that Lee can uh, share. Sharing my screen. Okay. okay. Hi, Lee. Uh, so. Hey guys, good morning. Hey, look, yeah, uh, good it's, a little, it's a little early over here. I would be on webcam, but then we wouldn't be able to post the meeting minutes publicly. <laughs> but so, um, yeah. So just, I want to ask that uh, uh, you left a comment here on this PR that uh, I had added an event uh, for journey into the world of service meshes and meshery. So that uh, you committed that we have to make this as a generic DevConf event. So what uh, exactly changes we have to make here? Yeah, I wondered if you might not have 
questions after I said that briefly. So I think the PR that you raised, try as I might, I don't think that there was anything to complain about, like good PR. Um, what is happening just on the side of your PR is the fact that there, that this community has, um, and actually it's a pretty cool thing. This isn't the first time this has happened, but if you guys look, just look at the names of the speakers who are talking, like these Nitish and Aditya, two individuals who showed up one day and started engaging, started talking, started asking questions, started uh, chuckling when I try to make a joke, even if they don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah. anyway, um, so so these guys are giving a talk. That's awesome. Then another another guy, Navendu Poda, wow, Navendu Poda Cat. He's also giving a talk. Um, his story is very is very much the same as event. As a matter of fact, Navendu works at Layer Five now, and he he started by contributing in this call on Layer Five So, um. But the point of me telling these stories is that there are three people giving two talks at the, this conference. That's fantastic. The way that we would ideally then list their talks on the layer5.io page or site is that when, when someone navigates that site, they're like, okay, what, you know, what, what does this group do? Um, uh, what thing, where are they going to be at? It could, could I go talk? Could I go meet with them at an event? Like where, where are they showing off their wares? Where are they talking about what they're doing? Like, oh, they, they were at KubeCon China. And you go to that page and you're like, okay, they're, they're there. Oh, it looks like they've got four or five talks. Okay, great. And so the same thing for DevConf. It's like, oh, they're going to be at DevConf. And they, so we just want a, a single entry for DevConf. And within that entry, we would then list the fact that there are you know, two individual talks by three speakers. And so I think there's another pull request up for, to create an entry for DevConf. We would just want to, wait, am I answering your question? You said I copied the names from the issue itself. The, oh yeah. Oh, okay. The name mentioned, okay. So there's two questions in here. One is, well, maybe there was only one question. I answered something that you didn't have a question on. I don't know. but. So we want to consolidate, you know, into a single event listing. But then the second item here is that Meshmate Aditya Krishna, he also, his longer, or like he generally goes by Aditya Krishna. He, he, well, that's funny. He misspelled his own name in the, I don't know, or someone misspelled his name. But so, so anyone who's been around the community for a little while, they eventually get well recognized for the things they're doing. They get loved on enough that, um, and we like what they're doing enough that we want to, you know, help uplift them and represent, you know, have them um, be represented on the site. And so they'll they'll be invited to receive a community member profile. And the nice thing about, I think it's the events collection, as well as the blog collection that if the blog author or if the event speaker, if their name, when it, when it is lowercase and then hyphenated, whether you know, the white spaces in the name are replaced with hyphens, and this is just part of the logic that has been built into our site. Um, if that name matches a profile under slash community slash members, then that name will be hyperlinked. And so, yeah, it, this is a really long answer to what's a short question probably. And that's just, yeah, you probably need to update the name um, to, I got it. yeah. And then after this, you'll go through the hairiness of uh, telling the other pull request that, they're not the they're not so they're not the only speaker at the conference, so there are multiple, and that if you would, you, for you to take on pulling in the content from the other PR and updating yours with that, 
Um, it, it doesn't have to be done in that order. Maybe you consolidate into theirs or it doesn't, doesn't matter. But one of the, an issue will be that the way that the logic in the site works is that in the front matter, if you're, it only expects to have a single um, talk, which isn't the case anymore. A lot of times we have multiple talks at the same conference. And so at the moment, you'll need to like manually create, you can look at the last KubeCon China entry and see what had happened, how, how that was dealt with. Um, eventually, something that any one of you that's on the call now might consider taking on is really is the, the notion that the front matter should be, see how we have speakers and it's an array? We should probably change the way that the events work and allow the, the talks, the entire talk to be an array as well. That way we can deal with them you know, we can deal with multiple talks in the same entry. Okay, so uh, what I got from your point that uh, we have to include multiple talks uh, in the same event, right? Uh, but uh, now we can only include one talk in that event. So we can make another PR for implementing the feature that multiple talks can be implemented in just a single event. Yeah. Yep. And in the meantime, until that you know, inherent, until that enhancement PR goes through, we can still consolidate into one event. It's just that we'll have to do a couple of things manually. And if you look at the last KubeCon China 2021 entry, you'll, you'll see what was done manually. It's not, it's not much. Right? Sure. I will do it. Nice. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Prakar. Thank you, Lee. Uh, so moving on, uh, we skipped over the introducing learning paths blog. So uh, the uh, Anita wrote a blog on introducing learning paths. Uh, this blog, uh, even like not just the styles, it also needs. Uh, okay, where are the blogs? Yeah. So this needs some reviews like a lot of people need to review it because it's not that great at the moment I can't even find the, blog. the learning paths is the first oh, okay one. yeah sorry <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, i'll fix up the styles and the uh, images that we're using here but uh, even the content the content uh, needs some reviewing So anybody who wants to uh, understand, uh, so uh, people who are new here and don't know what learning paths are. So basically there's a learning, uh, there's a learning path called mastering service meshes for developers. Over here, uh, you could uh, go through a course. Uh, basically we have two uh, learning paths, one with Istio and one with Linkerd. Here you could uh, get started with learning about Istio, how to deploy an application, expose services, uh, and everything and at the end you get uh, well acquainted with how istio, uh, istio works uh, so to introduce that uh, there was a blog written but yeah so this blog needs some reviewing to be done anyone on the call is more than welcome to read and share your views on it uh, but uh, yeah lee you would also have to read it i guess yeah, sure. Yeah, this this is a, by the way, this is pretty neat. This was um, the notion that there are learning paths, that there are multiple learning paths. Each one has multiple courses, and each course has multiple. Uh, what do we call them? Section chapters, chapters, and then some of those chapters have labs. It's a pretty neat thing. These are free for anybody to come learn on and we need to make a couple more um but these were create this whole concept was created here just on this call um and a number of people worked on it um one of the things that isn't obvious but it's really pretty cool is so aditya has navigated 
into the first learning path and he's um, going, he's on chapter one, he's, um, you know, walking through the content. And right now, if you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner, he's learning the content is Istio specific. Um, but if he decided, well, I'd rather learn Linkerd or any of the other meshes that like he can switch and the chapters might, will adjust, the content will adjust. And we actually need to bring um, content for each of the other service meshes. So like there's an open opportunity for any of you that are on the call to use the existing chapters as an frame, as an outline for creating like the Akuma version or an open service mesh version or a pick your favorite mesh, but like uh, it's a great way for you to learn, um, to learn a mesh is to go, go through these and, and, you know, create content for the other one. There's also like outside of that, if you want to ignore the content and just focus on the functionality of the site, um, there's another thing that, that needs to be done, at least one thing, um, and that's that that switcher between Istio and Linkerd, um, it's not prominent. People probably easily look past the fact that they could take the same course, same learning path under whatever um, mesh that they wanted to. Like what would be helpful, like actually, if you go, yeah, if you go back one page here. So, so here it says serv me service meshes you can learn. Um, it's not clickable. It's like, well, and, and right there, it kind of, it might be a little, yeah, yeah, th this, this is something for one of you to look at if you'd like to, is like, hey, how can the, the user, the learner, can they set their preference for which mesh they want to learn on here? Um, right now, that wouldn't take much other than probably just a cookie, probably, because when they dig into the act, because this is an outline of the course, when they dig into the individual chapter, um, it would be on that page that they would need to have that preference known. It's like, well, okay, so that's a multi-page thing. So we probably need to, we need to store that value somewhere a cookie is probably the right thing, you know, most appropriate thing for us to do. And that is a simple enough solution to implement as is right now, but where that would get a little, no, actually. So the page that, that Aditya is on, this is, this is the mastering service meshes for developers learning path. The course that he's on, it's the intro to service meshes course. And yep, here. And so um, it would be okay, it would work. Like this course supports two service meshes at the moment. And so if, if someone were to choose, oh yeah, I'd like to do Linkerd, then they just set that cookie. And you, what would probably happen is when they were to click on like the Linkerd icon, it would set that cookie and it would probably probably nav because they would we they would be expecting something to happen is that it would navigate them into getting started but on Linkerd. And actually since that would be the behavior, you actually could probably skip the cookie. I think a cookie would be nice because it would have some consistency as people navigate around the site. They go, they they make it through a couple of chapters. That was enough for the day. They come back and eventually so, so there's, okay, so, so let me, let me talk about this, this next thing. And that is that there were two, two phases to learning paths as something that was created uh, right now. Anyone can come learn, do the interactive labs and walk away with hopefully a, a ton of knowledge. Um, there's a couple of issues though. One is it's probably, you know, it's going to probably take them more than one sit down to go through it all and to, to learn it. And then, you know, that's fine, that's good. That's why there's multiple courses, multiple chapters, all that stuff. But it might be kind of nice if they were to able to come here, log in, and then just track their progress. So that the next time they come over, they're like, yeah, yeah, I, I did the first six, I need to go, I'm starting on the seventh chapter. They could also then, we can ask them questions along the way, they can do quizzes. And we could, if they log in, we can store the results of their quizzes. 
which means that if they're able to come and log in at the end of the second, at the end, they could receive a certificate. They can receive the, the world's only multi-mesh certificate. Today, you can go receive a certificate for service mesh only on Istio. This is set up to certify them on any mesh. So that's something we've talked about a lot for those that have been here for a while. Um, it's, doesn't, it's not gonna take us too much to go do that. Some of you might be thinking, well, you just talked about a login system, quizzes and tracking results, grading the quizzes, generating a certificate, et cetera. Yeah, it's not, it's actually not that difficult. Um, what makes it even more intriguing though, is that the majority of what I just said would be done in part based on a static website. Like how can a static website like this one log people in and then keep track of that? Well, it's possible. Um, we might though, um, some of you have used Meshery. Meshery gives you the option of logging in. We might go ahead and use that same login system to make it even more robust. Like, like we can definitely do the things that I just said on a static website um, with, a, with a little bit of help from another service. Um, but it's probably time to build out a more central auth system. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we can create a login uh, through Firebase on this site as well. Yeah, that's a great, yeah, that's a good example of like, right. So technically the site itself would, it's not a, it's not running a process. It's, yeah. yeah, as it is you're using React, it is not that difficult to like implement log uh, admin panel in it, so. Yeah, yeah, you, you hit it on the head. Like, that's a great example. Um, yeah. I would, so, if anybody's like, if we get more than, if we get more than one person interested in that, that stuff, all that stuff I just said, then we should, we should start. Like there's a few, there's a number of mockups in Figma on what I just said already. They're already done. There's a Google doc that talks about exactly what I just said. Actually, there's a Google doc called, I think it's called, uh, learn.layer5.io design spec. So there are pre-existing um, mockups. There's a design spec written. In this case, well, Abhijay pointed out like precisely a solution. We actually would choose not to use Firebase for a different solution, but, but that's the right, but that's the right thinking that that's, that's good. Uh, what we can do, like we can create a different milestone for this purpose and uh, we can uh, raise different issues uh, in that milestone and we can build this separately, like a, in a different branch. And, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, it's yeah. another good. Yeah. And we can like uh, uh, take help of other contributors as well in order to like build this as it is not possible by one person, it may take like different uh, people to contribute. Yeah. As it takes a lot of functionality to like uh, build a admin type thing. So there's so, so good. So yeah. Abhijay is giving me a confidence and encouragement. Is anybody out like, and he's right, like it's, uh, for some of it's it's child's play. <laughs> for some for some of the rest of us, yeah. it's an excellent opportunity to like learn a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the best thing I can uh, say is that you know, we can create a different milestone and let's start working on it. In order to like, we can follow the same approach as Meshri where and that what they used in that site. And we can follow as the, as both projects are on React, so it is not that difficult to make this admin thing. Anybody else? 
Um, yeah, I, I can help with that. Nikhil, there it is. Nikhil with the emoji. We need an emoji muscle next, next to Nikhil. <laughs> Nikhil, man, good to see you back on. I was excited to see your PR the other day. I didn't even look at the PR. Honestly, Nikhil, I didn't look at it. I just clicked merge. I don't know if I should admit that publicly. Can we, can we erase that from the recording? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, great. Okay, I'm not sure, but uh, can we use Integromat to like for user accounts? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, it would be, they would be, yeah, totally. Totally, you totally could. Yeah, because since we already, we just opened a new Integromat account, I think we could put that to use over here. You know what? It, um, you guys are both giving great example. Here, here, do, do, do. here's here's where I will make it more complex, in in a good way. Is well, is and by the way, I regret not having my webcam on, so I I apologize. It makes it harder for us all to connect. Um, but th there's a um. So there's learning paths right here. If we're going to hand out certificates, that's awesome. We absolutely should. By the way, if any, if if we get this done, if people engage here, all of you, we get this done. I can't tell you how many times you'll probably be annoyed, but how many times you will see people talking about your work, because most people love getting themselves a certificate, and they're going to go <laughs> share it a lot. Uh, so there's a real opportunity for you to take pride in, in the work here. There's, uh, we do want to aspire to something more sophisticated than Firebase and more sophisticated than uh, Integromat uh, for the user account. And that's in part because this thing that we're talking about here is one of a number of initiatives that, that we have where people would have an account so we'll actually, and, and I'll, I'll, one of those initiatives was that we want to have a play.layer5.io or a play.meshery.io. I don't, I'm not sure which domain it, we want to put it under, but, <clears throat> but we would host a copy of Meshery. And while people are going through these, this learning path, the interactive labs that we have available for them today, those are through Katakoda or through some environment that gets spun up for a few minutes and they, you know, however long they need to go through it. Instead, what we would do is actually host an instance of Meshery perpetually, let people sign in and come back, have the world service mesh playground. Okay, well, if they have an account like that, that would need an account. Over here, we would need an account. Someone signs into Meshery Cloud, they need an account. Um, there's a couple of other examples I could give about where people would need accounts, but um, point being then, Having a central um, auth system is is what we would go for, like something that's more sophisticated and uniform. And so the one that Meshery Cloud has now, it's taking care of much of the work that we have we would have to do. And so, um, but a lot of that discussion, and like we could still rearticulate why not Firebase. Uh, that all can go into the Layer Five IO, the learning the design spec. I'll grab a link. In the design spec, like if we do initiate this and we have this as an ongoing project here, I would ask that people sign up or not. Like are people, like the, the, there's various chunks of work uh, that can be broken out. And so we would just, we'd look for people to put their name next to next to it. So maybe I'll take an action item for my part, just to try to help organize this around this and see how serious we are, see if we can go do it. I didn't mean to take over the call or anything, but back to it. Yeah, so we were talking about the blog on learning paths. So if uh, if you guys want to review it it would be great uh, there's a if anyone's interested in particularly writing blogs we have a number of stuff to write on so there's a channel on slack called blog kitchen uh, you'd be able to 
add yourself to it and if you guys want to write blogs there's a lot to write uh, because there are a number of talks which are not documented yet so uh, anybody could start writing on that uh, moving on uh, we have a topic from dipanshu about adding deployment instructions for service mesh patterns dipanshu would you like to talk about that yeah sure i'm just sharing my screen just a minute <clears throat> is my screen visible yep, yep. yeah so yep. Yep. Uh, the issue i was assigned that i had to add deployment inst instructions for patterns since like if we see in the current readme file we are only having like a formal introduction to what are service mesh patterns and pro prototyping pattern files and their orchestration so we we were not we are not having a section on how to deploy the patterns so i have just like recently made a pr i was asked to make some changes so i have done it it is currently under review thanks there is a pr So this is ready for review, right? Yeah, 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 it's ready for review. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think. Good. Yeah, I, th I think um, it's done. Probably ready for yep. merge. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the last topic is from Shubham about uh, the error codes navigation. Uh, Shubham, would you like to speak to your topic? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so uh, uh, is my screen not visible? Not yet. Oh, okay. So uh, we have these error codes right now. Yeah, so these error codes are not like uh, very uh, like very like we can't we can't navigate it uh, very helpfully. So these need some restructuring. So Lee suggested that we could uh, use this. Uh, this uh, we could use this uh, expando rows for the tables. So I would be implementing these uh, this week. Uh, and if somebody has any other suggestions as well, we could like see if, if uh, we could take into consideration consider consideration those suggestions as well. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to tell about. And uh, I had one other thing that uh, yeah. So uh, is it? Hmm. Yeah, so I, I just like in the start of the meeting, as I showed you uh, the customized video player, right? So it wasn't working of uh, working in the Safari browser as we pointed out. So if somebody uh, could like, as I have uh, tried to uh, have cross browser cross compatibility for that, uh, for that video player as well. So if somebody could like, or Lee, even if Lee could check if in the, if it's working in Safari browser now or not, that would be great. Yeah. Um... Do we have do we have time to check it right now, Aditya? Yep. Uh, yeah, it? we do. I'll I'll share my screen. Okay, I'll have to share my entire screen. Uh, it was this one, right, Shubham? Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. I forgot to say, I did check it the PR after you made this last update. And I did okay. so from um, Safari mobile and it, it worked or like the modal the modal would come up and it was really, you know, pretty tiny. And 
But as soon as I were to press on any part of the video, I believe it went full screen from there. It started playing and then went and went full screen, which was like I think the ideal behavior for modal for mobile. Yeah, so if you click on the video, the video would start playing. That's what uh, that's what was the intention. So was it like was it playing even after you click click outside of the uh, like like in the background as well? Ooh, I have to I have to check. I don't know that I. No, that. okay, it, it doesn't work on the background, but uh, I think the this thing is like the bottom bar is not working on Safari, like okay okay. Like, I can't click on it. Okay, I managed to click on it, <laughs> but yeah, but it's not exactly working on Safari. Hmm. So it it was working fine on Chrome, uh, and like us, uh, I, I guess Safari is using WebKit uh, browser like WebKit engine as well. So I tried hmm. it. I tried to use it in uh, like in other browser that was using WebKit engine. So it was working fine in in that too. So I would try to like do it uh, like in Safari as well. Okay. So yeah, like, the, the issue here like, is like this uh, hovering effect, right? Yeah, like uh, it's it doesn't stay for long enough, right? So I can't click on anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. And also, okay. like since I pressed escape to, uh, like yes, the the, the the icon is not changing. Yeah, the icon has also stayed. Yeah, so I I I I wanted to ask that if if uh, like I can't uh like in, in the JavaScript file the script file. I can't mm. uh, like uh, I can't uh, like uh, get the uh, get the key. You know you need to get the uh, key the which key is pressed right when you when you do that. So I I don't have a solution right now for it. So if somebody has a solution for it, that would be great as well. Okay, yeah, right, right for for the escape key, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So when you when you go from the uh, uh, from the full screen to uh, like normal screen, I can't yeah. get the key. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Anyone have any ideas about that? How to execute that? Oh, we could even go if if it's if if it is like too much, then we could even go to the default uh one the default player that HTML gives us. But I guess this looks good. Yeah. This yeah. This is looking quite good. You. Yep. I might have missed. Are you talking about like uh, escape key code? No, no, yeah, I tried that, but it is not. Uh, it is not uh, getting that key code. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay. 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 So, uh, Shubham, anything else you would like to discuss? No, no, no. That's that's all from my side. All right. Thank Do you for taking me, Dal. Yeah, the, the one other one other thing though that Chubham had brought up before, and that is the meshery error codes inside of meshery docs, mm -hmm. was I think I don't know if everyone quite understood what he quite got what he was saying because in part what he was saying is hey does anyone else have any ideas about how to you know structure this page such that it's usable like there's a ton of when, when someone bumps into an error in Meshery, Meshery has this um, system in which it will automatically generate error codes on a per component basis. And there's a whole framework in Go that was written by one of the maintainers to help do some like auto documentation of, of error codes. So the, every error code is supposed to have a mnemonic uh, and and a, and a numeric. So if you scroll down to the first two, yeah. So the air, the first column and the second column, error name, error code. So error name, the combination of error name and error code are intended to be globally unique. And actually to the extent that like, if someone went to Google Meshery, they typed in Meshery, they typed in the error name and error code that they would ideally land on this page pretty quickly. Or if they just went to this page, because anytime that someone receives an error code, in a log, not anytime, but most of the time, there will also be a hyperlink to this error codes reference guide. When they're on the page, they should be able to hit control F and like paste in 
the error name and error code. Right now, those two things are separated in two different columns, making it a little bit difficult to get to the exact one. Because a lot of times what people would consider is like, oh, yeah, I got error code um, 1002. And so they come to this page, they would search for it. Well, they would find that like there are four 1002s. Hey, what's going on? Like that's not this 1002 is talking about something else. I thought these were unique. What's going on? Well, it's really the combination of the error name and the error code um, because the error codes repeat themselves uh, for each component. So this is the Meshery Istio component. And then there's you know a bunch of other components. Um, and all, that's one kind of th issue that Shubham is thinking about. The other thing he's thinking about is that like, wow, when, if you scroll to the right a little bit, Aditya, um, you know, the purpose of the, and if you scroll down, maybe just look for a, a, a really, a, um, the purpose of this documentation is to let people know, hey, you got this thing happened. And by the way, it was probably caused by such and such and uh, suggested remediation to how to fix this and get past it is such and such. And those such and suches, <laughs> they can go on for a little while. And the way that we're displaying them, Shuvam is currently thinking about like how to not, how to improve upon the way that we've displayed this stuff. And um, one of the suggestions is to create this sort of table in table effect or maybe just have an expandable, in a more simple way, have just an expandable row. So if a user were to find, oh, that they're interested in that, a specific error code, they wouldn't see all the details like the probable cause, the suggested remediation. When they click on the row, it would expand and then it would show them the additional detail. And that way, you know, the page is navigable. Um, and so Shubham was just, asking if anybody else has different ideas, you know, you, you could do a modal kind of a thing, like, um, you know, that might be overkill or, you know, if there's a lot to show, if we had a video each time, you know, like, oh, hey, actually that's a really great thing. Actually, if somebody, some of these things people hit all the time and it's like, uh, yeah, you know, anyway, does anybody, everybody, Anybody have any feedback for Shubham on what what he might go to do? So, like the alert sever the severity. I think right now we're not real. The developers, the contributors, are not really using different severities just yet. But eventually we could, that could just be an icon or it could be a color coding, right? And then that would save some room and that could just be displayed to someone. It doesn't have to have its own column. It's just like, you know, the fact that it is an alert or the fact that it's in a critical would mean that it was orange or red or whatever it, you know. So that's about as many ideas as I've got. I mean, one thing like to right now, the severity, the column name is vertically, uh, you know, and that the intention was to save space. Uh, the problem is it saves like three characters of space because severity is a longer word than alert, but it doesn't save that much. And so, yeah. Uh, oh, we could use uh, in place of severity, we could use bug. Yeah, like you mean like a is, like a picture, like an icon or something? Yeah, not like an icon. Oh no, not like an icon. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, oh, the icon oh. icon sounds pretty right. If we put an icon over here, it would actually look pretty good. Yeah, if you had a warning symbol, a stop sign, like yeah, you just have to kind of create a legend of like what are the different severities. And the reason that, that like the word bug is a good idea because it's nice and concise. The challenge with the word bug is like, well, actually most of the time, 
when people hit these alerts, sometimes it's due to a bug, but a lot of times it would be due to their environment. Like they didn't, their environment isn't functioning correctly and it's not necessarily Meshery's fault. Okay. Priority is another word that could display severity. The priority is about as long as severity. And so um, priority really communicates something else like, I don't know. Anyway, um, level could be another, it's a shorter word that like, but then sort of assumed that everyone knows you're talking about severity. Anyway, that's not really the challenge. Like that's, isn't really going to help. That isn't going to move the needle. What's going to move the needle is getting rid of long description, probable cause and suggest getting rid of those other three columns from immediate view is like, what's, what's the task when someone comes here as a user, someone says, I, I, you know what, I've been running into this uh, air nil client code 1013. I need to find it, figure out what's going on, fix this thing. It's stopping me from using Meshery. Okay, apparently this is the error reference guide. So I'm, I'm here. Um, let me, f first task, I need to find the, the alert that's bugging me. Okay, I found it. Second task is read in detail what it's about. So if the first task is to find it, do they really need to see all the detail of all the rest of the stuff? Eh, no, they need an easy way to filter and find. Like, okay, what's if you go to the top, the very top of the page, anybody here own a vehicle or maybe just a motorcycle or something? Like, hey, if you, if you, um, if you need to buy some new tires for your car, well, so you go to uh, tires.com or wherever. And most of the time, what they'll do, the way that they set you up to like to order some tires online or just to make sure that they're there and available in the store or to look up the price, what they do is they take you through a series of questions. They say, what's the make of your car? You choose Mercedes. They say, what's the model of your car? You choose um, 500 uh, executive series, obviously, right? The, uh, <laughs> no. Convert. Then they say, well, what's the uh, shape? You, you say convertible, because that's, that's, that's the only way that you drive. Anyway, the point is, they ask, they take you through a series of drop down of questions. And basically, when you get to the end, they're like, is it a two door or four door? Bink. Is it what year is it? Bink, bink, bink. And then they get to the end, like tires.com, how many ty different tires do they sell? Bagillions, right? Like, because that's a word. And then, uh, uh, but when you're done answering all the questions, they whittle it down to like, yeah, here's 15 choices. Well, that could be the same experience here. And we kind of already have the start of it here. It's like, you're getting an error where you're using Meshery CTL. Okay. And you click on that and you start to filter, like, like, so we can have page filters that say, I only am interested in one component. And then from there, they can just see just for that component. Um, yeah. There's a couple of ways to kind of chop this down. Um, and actually the combo of both can work. Um, having some filters that people can use to navigate to you know, their area of pain, their, their component. And then from there also hiding all the details, let someone I first find what they're interested in and then click to see the details. The table below, we can probably add a collapsible or something like maybe a sideways collapsible. So suppose they read the first three columns and if they're interested, they click on that and that slides away, like slides the other description in in the same row, something of that sort, or maybe opens another. Uh, that, that is, that pretty, that's, that's weird. That is exactly my first suggestion. That's weird. That's a great, I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> hmm. One uh, low hanging fruit for anyone who wants to get involved in docs is, uh, so the adapted names should all be consistent. Like this, you can see it's written as OSM, but the other adapter is Meshari Kuma. So I guess we should follow the same naming convention for all. So it's a very small change if anyone wants to take it up. Or Lee, is that something that we wanted? No, it totally is. Yeah, all, all, almost all. Like always, we want to be consistent. I, I, the one challenge, as someone digs into that, you might find that the ultimate solution is a bit of an update in the Golang that's used to report this. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, um, I think we can change the title on, in the JSON. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. 
but I'm not sure if, if if it was regenerated, if that would cause a problem. If we change the JSON like manually, because the JSON is auto generated, right? Right. So just so long as um. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's too good. Yep. You're right on both of those points. Your second point kind of undoes your first point. <laughs> yeah. I probably need to talk to Ashish about this. So like uh, we could do like two things like right here, like as we discussed now. So one one thing is we could use expander rows like the like the first solution, and the other was like we could use a, a form type form thing like the type of adapter you are using, and then the type the error code, and then when you like if you click submit then that uh, this description of that uh, error code and the sub short description and the long description appears, something like that. Yeah, a sort of a filter type. Yeah. Okay. So maybe like if we want to discuss more about this, Shubham, like you could go on the discuss. We could have this on the discuss forum. Yeah, so that could, would be uh, great. So that the... everyone can chime in. Yeah, yeah, yeah for the yep. solution. Okay. Sure. So, uh, one last topic that uh, I think Aditya had a, a question about was the progress bar component in machine UI. So the thing uh, is, I'm yeah. not really sure. Yeah. So I'm not really sure about what the progress bar component is. Lee, if you have any idea about it. It's in the state management implementation tracker. Like if you could go there. Yeah. Yeah. It's here, but it has nothing written next to it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought like you would know something about it. So I yeah. yeah. It might be, yeah, the, the that word, those words progress bar might be being used synonymously with uh, like a spinner or like a waiting indicator. Uh, um, oh wait, I, I think it has something to do with the connection wizard. Like uh, there's a progress bar on top of the connection wizard, right? Which shows uh, after each step, it fills up something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It does. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so it's that. Uh, it's something of this sort. Uh, the, yeah, no, I totally remember. I mean, the connection wizard itself needs to be rewritten. Yeah, so uh, Aditya, it's something of this sort so that after each step, uh, one of these would get filled. So it shows the progress of the entire, of the connection wizard or whatever we use it for. Uh, so we have to make a component like that replicate yeah, the you just have to make this component so that we can use it anyway. Oh all right, all right. I got it. Thank so, you. So since we are over time, uh so let's uh we'll I have already we've already discussed about incorporating Redux and uh, the state management a bunch of times, so we can skip over this topic today. Uh, does anyone else have anything to discuss about? Any questions? I guess not. Okay. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Uh, I'll see you guys on some other calls or next week again at the same time. So thank you all. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Right. Hey, Aditya, did you have something? One last item? Mr. Subedi? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, the error code page, which uh, Aditya yeah. just showed, the yeah. linkered link is not working. Linkered and the awesome adapter. When I click on it, it does not navigate me to the linkered error code. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. You know what? That's a. It, that might also be due to the fact that those names, uh, that that these are, like, um, you said the linkered is an example. Yeah. So, so if we look at, I don't. It's really small, but if you can see in my browser. 
the lower left hand corner. It, yeah. Yeah. It's so it says, nothing. Yeah. So it right. says, well, the lower, lower, le like there's a status bar that comes up in my lower left hand corner down here. Yeah. Um, I couldn't, uh, yeah. I cannot see it. Yeah. <laughs> it's super small. I don't even think if I increase the font, maybe. Maybe it'll, yeah, it's still super small. It but is what it, visible. It is like uh, uh, when we uh, click on any link, like hover on any link, uh, a small yeah. uh, tooltip get appear on our browser's corner. You can yeah, see I, I it, it at left corner. Yeah. So the the deal is, yep, that anchor that's being used, pound it's pound sign linker d hyphen adapter. If that same, if the heading for Linkerd isn't the same, like likely it's not the same. And so, um, so the point uh, of making uh, those links is to smooth scroll to these errors, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you see the hyperlink that where the anchor is on the page, it's actually pound signed meshery adapter for Linkerd. Yeah. Okay. So smooth scroll, scroll is missing, right? Um, no, that's not how I would say it. Uh, what's missing? What's wonky? What's what's the, the, the URL book? of the click that href of that uh, linker thing is wrong? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the a tag. It's the anchor that's um, yeah. Okay, okay, which isn't part um, what what's uh. Meshmate Aditya was pointing out. Is it like, here, let me, I'll just clarify one of them. So the, yeah, the actual location in the page says that it's Meshery adapter for Linkerd, but the hyperlink that's supposed to take you there, it says to go to Linkerd adapter. adapter. Well, yeah. That, okay. Yeah, it definitely, I encourage you to, to jump in and, uh, yeah. So sure, like, should we create an issue and work on it or? Uh, please, yeah, if, if you would. I mean, I, I think it'll, I, my hunch is, I'll be somewhat impressed if you figure it out. And that's got nothing to do with you and everything to do with, it's a bit confusing some of the the uh, liquid templating or the the jekyll that's being used to iterate through and, and like i think i think i would struggle a little bit to get it figured out and so i think it's an excellent thing to i think it's you know you should definitely work on it and um you you will probably figure it out i, I just think it's it's slightly harder than it looks all right, so this is a lot of automated stuff and not manual stuff, right? So it will be hard to figure out. Yeah, it may generate it may generated by an uh, automated JSON file. So maybe. Yeah, there's a little. Yeah, it's kind of there's kind of two things going on. So the data that is being used that, that is being displayed, all of those error codes and all the like. Yeah, that that's. It is being auto-generated by Golang, and it's being, but in some respects, you can totally ignore that. It's um, the data that uh, that this this error codes page is using. It's it is is just data files, or or just like any anything else that Jekyll iterates over. So the fact that Golang generated it is kind of a red herring. Like it doesn't that that. The, the the only that that doesn't actually bear weight on how you um, for loop over it and iterate through it. The only reason that that statement that it is auto generated by Golang, the only reason that that has an effect is that it means that if you if part of your solution was oh yeah you know in order to fix this like here's here's all the data and you're like oh yeah in order to fix it for Linkerd. Uh, oh, here's what we needed to do. We need to make sure that it doesn't say Linkerd adapter, that it says Linkerd hyphen, it says meshery adapter for Linkerd, then that would fix it and we're all good to go. If that's your solution, that's fine. That's a fine solution. Um, but you, if you, you will, you, if you edit this JSON and commit it and then you think it's fixed, 
like a little bit later, some other automated process is gonna come behind and rewrite this. So that, that's the only, if you need to change this, then it matters about the Golang stuff. But if all you need to change is this page, the error codes guide itself, and then how it is that it's querying for um, you know, the data, then, then you're good. You, you're in control here. Um, yeah, does that make sense? All right. No, 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 you can't say that. Like, yeah, you have to actually repeat it back because my sense is it doesn't make sense. No, you said that if we have to be changing some files in the data data folder, then then it will be again be rewritten re 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 by some another process. But if we go to the root of the problem and, and correct how the page is accepting or receiving data, then we can have some solution. Okay, cool. You did get it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, I just I can't tell you how many times I talk to people and they're like, uh, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they have, and they're just like, right. yeah, cool. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, is like, you might be able to go fix it in the Golang as well. Like it's, you don't have to know Golang very well to like, but, um, because, because the fix might just be, oh, it, there's a, there's an area in the Golang for that, uh, adapter meshry hyphen linker D where, uh, he, he, uh internal config where there's this error dot go and it's saying like hey go go generate all these errors and here's the error codes and okay this looks familiar these are the these are definitely the error codes but this isn't really gonna help me okay like oh config.go let's see okay it's like the question is kind of like, what does this adapter call itself? If it calls itself Linkerd, oh, uh, then maybe that's all that needs to be. Like, I, I, I'm just trying to help you kind of get to a point where you would figure this out. But I, I'm yeah. just saying, if it ends up being in the Golang, like it may not. You don't have to know Golang to just say, oh, you know what? It just needs to be hyphen or meshery adapter Linkerd. So we can do like we can create in another field in order to like resolve this. Like uh, as uh, I can see, it is taking file name as in uh, as in that J JSON file. So that's why it is not redirecting. Yeah, so, good thing too. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Yeah, the the challenge. That's a good suggestion as well. The problem is, it's a one off fix. Like. Now it needs to be fixed um, sy systemically. That same uh, that that same approach is used by like twelve other components, and so yeah. we need to make sure that they're all consistently. And you, so you can go to like the, a different adapter uh, to whoops to just learn. Uh, if we just look real quick, like in the config, so. The file name is still Istio, but the Istio link is working in the docs. So, like, that's not that's not the exact issue. Um, yep, you'll have to. You can't. It's a dangerous assumption to to. Yeah, Istio is also not working. Oh, Istio isn't working. Okay, which one is working? Let's go look at that one. Mesh Meshkit is working. Meshkit. Okay, how about a different adapter? Just to. Yeah, help? none of the adapters are working. Oh, okay. <laughs> well then, okay. So if we go look at mesh kit, well, the mesh kit's a bad example because it's just going to be a one word thing. Like, is there another one? Uh, mercy sit, mesh-y CTO. Fine. Okay. Which is another one word example. And um, mesh okay. adapter library. Oh, okay. That's good. So let's try that one. Okay. mesh adapter library. Uh, where were we? All right, nothing in there. No. Um, 
component info JSON. There we go. Okay. This is more like what we should be looking for. Yeah, yeah this. this cool. hmm. So, I uh, don't want to steal your guys's thunder. Like, it, is that if you go look into the adapters and look at component info JSON and start comparing? I think, I think that, yeah, that that's, you know, probably what you need to. That might solve the issue. Yeah. Yeah. You guys will be the heroes. Tell you. <laughs> you guys, you know what? It's funny is you'll have solved like two or three things in one thing, which is, hey, they're inconsistent, which is what Aditya, Meshmade Aditya was pointing out. And then yeah. you're pointing out like, well, the links don't even work anyway. So like, you know, there's a second issue. And then um, the other thing is that also the capitalization, et cetera, is not as inconsistent, you know, it's like, so there's uh, yeah. Also you might, you might find out that like inside that component info, there's some components that are called adapters, some components that are called well, a library, some that are called like a, yeah. but it would be good to have some control, some, so consistent. So you get like, if you guys did an audit and, and it's pretty easy, like if you just go around to each of the repos that, you know, that, that where you see error codes for, if, if you just make a quick list and you show it in Wednesday's uh, meshery meeting, yeah. you will look, uh, you look pretty good because you'll have done homework. You can say, Hey, look, I, you know, Here's some inconsistencies. I've itemized what these are. And then here's what I propose is that we rename in accordance with this or whatever. Okay, we can look forward to we can try to communicate with each other and try to solve it as if cool. yeah. All right. Every day. By the way, by the way, guys, you can also um I was gonna say, like you can make the change in the adapter. What's the yeah? Like building the adapter is super easy. It's not that much. You don't have to know Go is what I'm saying. Like you can just do the, the you, could, you just do a make run. The problem is, the problem is the way that the error codes are generated. It's a lot more confusing. Um, but if you make, if you propose a solution, I was just trying to say, you might be able to confirm that your solution works. I think it's going to be a little uh, hairy. But yeah, yeah, good. That's great. Okay, yeah, I will try on it and maybe have something on Wednesday's meeting. Oh, that's that's. Well, I'm glad I stayed on the call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank oh, you. Nice. Yeah. All right. See you guys uh, in a little bit. All right. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye guys. Bye. 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 bye.